David said, I slept and I wake up because the Lord sustained me. God is your sustainer. Is your keeper. Is your, is your deliverer. Is your protector. Is your provider. Oh my God. Give him a shout. Yes, Lord. Shall be seated. Wonderful opportunity to be in the house of God this morning. It's a privilege to know the Lord. It's a privilege to be a child of God. A lot of people are in the world there that they don't know God yet. And we are privileged to know the Lord and to come to worship him this morning. One of the reasons why we are made is to worship him. I'd like you to appreciate your neighbor. Look at him. You are looking good this morning. You are not flattering, but you are appreciating the glory of God. Amen. Let's appreciate the pastor and the wife of this church for great work they are doing here. Appreciate the man of God and the woman of God for great work they are doing here. Let's appreciate all the workers of the church, the music people, media, everybody who that are making things to happen. You see, no matter how you chase money to pay your bills, you still need to spend time to serve God. Let my people go that they may do what? Serve me. So the reason you are delivered, the reason you are delivered, the reason you are protected is to serve him. So if you are a Christian and you don't have anything you are doing to serve God, you need to check your Christianity. It's only baby that don't serve. In a house, when you go to a house, babies, they are blessing, but they are also a liability sometimes. Am I right? Until they grew to a level. When they grew to a level, they need to get involved in cleaning, in cooking, in running things. And baby don't wait to be, baby want to be served. So when you are a child of God and you are not doing anything in the house of God, you are a baby. Are you with me? And baby don't have inheritance. Baby depend on people. They depend on their parents. But the moment you are a child of God and you are seven, you are an adult. And you can have an inheritance. You can be given the control of a home. When you are going out and you have baby at home, you can't even go out because there are laws that guide you that when a child is still young, you can't leave them at home. So when they have become an adult, you can leave them at home. They can take charge. There are so many things we are believing God for. But God is looking at you. You are a baby. If I give you these things, you, it's going to destroy you. So I want to encourage you this morning, if you are not doing anything in the house of God, look for something doing to serve God. Are you with me? Joshua said, if it is me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Look at your say, if it is me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We started talking about relationship in the last few weeks. We had a conference last week to open it up. And I want to continue where we started, where we stopped. And today I'll be looking at how to build authentic relationship. How to build authentic relationship. Building authentic relationship. And this is going to be beautiful for single and married. Whether you are single or you are married. Last week we defined it, four kinds of singles. Whether you are married or singles, this is going to help you. How to build authentic relationship. In one of the Jesus's, um, uh, Jesus's talk with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they asked him a question. The question was to, 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 to make him fall. They just want a question that will destroy his theology. They were not asking this question because they loved Jesus. They wanted to trap him. And that's what we are going to be checking right now. Matthew Gospel chapter 19. I'd like us to read from verse 2 to 8. And I want everybody to open Bible or look on the board and read because some people don't read Bible every day. They don't read Bible, but they read social media every day. So let's read Bible every day. Matthew 19, 2 to 8. And a great multitude followed him and he hid them there. Then the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? 
and he answered and said unto them have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and he said for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and the twins shall be one flesh verse 6 verse 7 I want us to read verse 7 together. Whatever God had joined together, let Moses and put asunder. Let's say verse 7. And they said to him, Why did Moses then command to give a written of divorcement and put away our eye away? Verse 8 together. If you have it, can you want to go? So far, you to pray well, from the beginning, it was not so. Say, but from the beginning, it was not so. Say it again. Say it again. So, divorce is not in the beginning. Divorce is very easy to mention in our time. That's a song some people sing in their home. I will divorce you. But it was not so. From what? From the beginning. There are three kinds of marriage today that existed. The first kind of marriage is a traditional marriage. What I call it? Say, let me hear you. Traditional marriage. The second kind of marriage that existed today is contemporary marriage. Come and say contemporary. The third kind of marriage is a kingdom marriage. Come and say kingdom marriage traditional, contemporary or kingdom marriage there are many people in church today who are still practicing traditional marriage many pastors are teaching traditional marriage the western world has made a lot of people to begin to practice contemporary marriage but it if you're a born again Christian, the kind of marriage you must practice is a kingdom marriage. What do I call it? Bible marriage. Kingdom marriage. In a traditional marriage, a woman is lower than the husband. Are you with me? In the traditional marriage, a man is the king of all kings. The Alpha and the Omega. In the traditional marriage, a man will have a cane for the wife and also for the children. And I've heard women say, until you beat me, my head cannot be correct. In the traditional marriage. That's what happened. Why did you think the issue of beating wife come from? Do you know that people beat their wife? Huh? You don't know. You know. You are lying. A, a law was made over that. Am I right? Why do you think that the law was made? Because traditional marriage exalts a man above the wife. Traditional marriage made the man to be lord of lord, the king of kings. A lot of marriages succeeded in traditional marriages because women are deprived of education and jobs. So they have to depend on the man for sustenance and he will control your source of living control your destiny some of us grew up in a traditional marriage we see our parents the man is the alpha and omega when the traditional man is coming the, the husband everybody is running up and down to hide their face wife and husband cannot talk freely the way they like because that's what they call what traditional marriage but in the extreme came into a contemporary marriage where the woman is the alpha and omega the woman can do anything if you divorce me 50 percent of all your wealth we are enjoying it together if you misbehave i call police for you i call cops for you <laughs> that's a contemporary you know there is extreme everywhere traditional marriage extreme contemporary marriage what extreme in a contemporary marriage the husband is never respected it wasn't it's not very important but you see in kingdom marriage is the balance is what is the balance 
Now, when we get back to the Bible, they were tempting Jesus, the Pharisees, about divorce. Can we divorce our wife? Because it's a traditional marriage. In fact, they say Moses said we can just give we can just divorce for anything. If I just look at you and you're not smiling, go and pack your load and go. <laughs> Praise God. The king look at Fasti. It's too Fasti. Come, come and show. Come on, come on, come on, come and show the people around. Come and show your beauty. And what is bad if the woman feel like she's in the mood swing? What is bad if Shiva is not? I, D, I don't want to come. Oh, I'm very tired. I'm not feeling to come out. I mean, you know, women does that a lot. If that happen, but because it's a traditional marriage, her throne was taken from her. And Nesta came in. So, kingdom marriage is what we are talking about. So, if you are not a member of the kingdom of God, you can't understand what the Bible marriage is all about. In the Bible marriage, there are things that must be done. You must live in integrity. Come on, say integrity. So, let me hear you. So, you see, in a kingdom marriage, you have to, from the dating, you have to start by being authentic you are not covering up you are not lying you tell the person who you are you are not trying to package yourself in any way that is beyond the kingdom because both of you are children of God now if I misbehave to my wife is a daughter of the most high am I right? If she behaved to me in a negative way, I am the son of the Most High. And God is the judge of both of us. Amen. And that's what makes kingdom marriage so specific, so powerful. It's very important to understand how do you build authentic and integrity in a marriage? You see, the word integrity and authenticity is very close word that people use today. But authenticity is to state of truth to a oneself, living a lie without pretense or deception. Be honest about your feeling, your thought, and your behavior. You are not trying to present yourself in an inconsistent way. To be authentic means to require self awareness, self acceptance, to love yourself. This is me. I'm not trying to package anything, I'm not trying to tell you what I'm not. And that is the lifestyle of a born again Christian. Because you know that Jesus is watching you 24 7. Holy Spirit is inside you to check you at all times. So, integrity reminds us that we are a community and we are working with people, we are serving people. So, there are principles and values by which we live in integrity. In accordance, there are principles and values that guide our life. Integrity means doing what is right, even when it's difficult, when it's unpopular. It is it requires a personal level of responsibility and accountability. That's an authentic person. So it means that I'm gonna put my partner's happiness every time I'm talking, every time I'm doing something. Because, you see, for two people to stay together, you must be conscious of each other. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. You know, the wife of Job says something in Job chapter 2 verse 9. The wife of Job. You know, the person that knows you better is who? Your wife. Your mother don't even know you. Because at the time your mother stopped knowing you, you are still growing. A lot of people... Their parents, they know them to a level. But the person that knows you where well is who? Your spouse. Amen. He knows you inside out. You can you can lie you can lie to everybody, but you can lie to your to your spouse. In Job chapter two verse nine, let's hear what Job says. I mean, Job's wife said about Job. Job two nine. Then said to his wife unto him, Do you still retain that integrity? cause God and die. So Job's wife know that this guy has what? Oh my God. 
he has integrity. The wife knows. This is my husband. I know him. He loves God. Can your wife say you love God? Can your husband say you love God? Because both of you stay in the same house, you know each other. You know, the, the, one of the most powerful relationships is the relationship that involves spirit, soul, and body. Come and say spirit. Come and say soul and body. That's, that's the most powerful relationship. So Job's wife said, cause God and die because you are a person of integrity. There are four places we will maintain integrity when we are in a relationship. Number one, maintain integrity when you are together. When you are with your spouse. Maintain integrity. Don't just say anything, anyhow. You must maintain compassion, openness, and kindness. Your relationship will be a priority beyond any other thing. You must maintain integrity when you are apart. When nobody is seeing you. When nobody is around you, when your partner is not with you, you must maintain integrity. In integrity marriage or in authenticity marriage, you can't hide anything from anyone because you are in integrity. When you are apart, you maintain integrity in public. When you are in the public, you maintain integrity. You maintain integrity when you are in a private, when you are alone. When nobody is seeing you and heaven is seeing you. In this service, I'm going to share with you 13 ways to practice authentic relationship. 13 ways. Now, I might not be able to finish the first service, but we'll continue in the second service. Let me start by saying that every character, every character we exhibit in the kingdom is practice. Is what? Have you heard it say practice made what? So, Character is not a gift. You learn it. It's not what? Anointing is a gift. Praise God. One of the qualifications of somebody that will be a leader in the church, deacon, bishop, is number one. It listed that you must be able to manage your marriage well. Manage your home well. I think God is more interested in home more than every other place. No wonder I did not start government first it didn't start business first the first thing God started is what family come on the family that's the first thing he started he created Adam and Eve that's the beginning of everything so when someone want to lead people they say he must first lead his own first a bishop a deacon must be husband of one wife how many wife it must be. It was given the qualification. And he said he must be able to teach. He was a bishop. Now that teaching gift is an anointing. Some people can teach, but they may not practice it. Are you with me? Is somebody hearing me now? A pastor's wife many years ago came on the altar and he said, I want to marry this man that is preaching. Everybody was shocked. I want to marry this man that is preaching. Everybody was shocked. He said, because this man's preaching is nice on the altar. This man's preaching is loving on the altar. But when you leave the pulpit, it's a different ballgame. Because you see, character must be practiced. You will learn how to humble. You will learn how to be kind. You will learn how to, 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 to be able to endure. Have you discovered when you get married, you will learn not to be selfish? Am I right? You will learn how to be nice, how to be kind, how to endure. So every character we want to practice, you need to learn it. As you get into a relationship, you learn how to relate with people. Mothers are doing great work. That's what you do for a child when you are raising a child. Mother will begin to instill some discipline in that child. They see tendency for laziness, tendency for, for, for stealing. They will be looking at those tendencies and they will be dealing with it as mothers. The same way we are going to be a person of authenticity and integrity, we have to practice those things. We have to learn it. Because character is something you learn. 
I can be a pastor, but if I'm not learning holiness, I can still be living in sin. I can be a pastor if I'm not learning giving. I can see I can see before. There are things that you need to do by yourself. You need to learn obedience. The Bible says Jesus learned obedience by what he suffered. He learned obedience by what he do. What even Jesus he learned obedience. So you have to learn it. Amen. It's not going to drop on your lap. You won't be a nice person from heaven. You will learn to be nice. Amen. Are you with me? Have you discovered when our parents are raising us, when somebody gives us a gift, they say, what do you say? Huh? They are teaching you to be grateful. What are they teaching you? Gratitude. What do you say? Is that how to greet? They are training you. And when you can do well in home training, you will do well everywhere. Are you with me? So, what are the practices? What are the things we do that can show integrity in our relationship. I hope you know what I'm teaching this morning is not just about marriage, it's about, about relating with everybody. Although marriage is going to be more what I'm speaking about, but you know, relationship, if you cannot relate well with human, normal person, you can relate well in marriage. You can relate well with people you work with in the office. You can relate well with friends. It's going to affect you in the marriage. And God has designed human beings for relationship. We are designed to connect. We are designed to do what? And that's why there is no body that will succeed alone in life. Nobody can succeed alone. You will need people. In the journey of life, you will need what? When your mother gets pregnant of you, a doctor helps your mother to confirm your pregnancy. Am I right? When, you are, when your mother is being delivered, somebody help your mother. Am I right? So, till you die from the gra- cradle to grave, you will need people. So, you must learn how to relate with people. How to be nice to people. A lot of people are poor today because they have no know how to relate with people. If you are going to run a business, you run it with who? If you are going to work in office, you work with what? In fact, when you get to a level in your business life, you move from your technical skill to people's skills. Am I right? Oh, I'm a manager. What is the meaning of manager? It's to manage business and manage people. Am I right? To get people to do the work and to, be, to know how to challenge them, inspire them, train them. Amen. Now, if you have failed in doing that, you won't be able to even manage relationships. Amen. Because when you are dealing with marriage, it's a deep thing. It's tough. Have you discovered everybody can correct you except your spouse? Everybody. Oh, look at the way you dress. Can you adjust your shirt? And you say, thank you. But if your wife says, look at the way you dress, you adjust your shirt. Why are you talking to me like that? How many of you know it's so difficult? Praise God. But you know the reason why he or she is telling you? Because she loves you. Amen. If I pass you and you don't have business with me, what what my business? Even if you don't dress well, you are on your own. Am I right? The only reason I'm correcting you because I love you. He who the father loves it, he corrects. Am I right? I told you last week there are two kinds of love. There's a tender love. What I call it? That's a love. You embrace each other. You feel the oxytocin. You feel the serotonin. You feel the dopamine. Are you with me? Oh, as I hug you, I feel. That thing you are feeling is good. Are you with me? But that's one side of it. The second side of it is a correcting love. It's a love that made African mother to bring a cane Wah, wah, wah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And you say this woman is bad. No, it's a love. It's, lo- it's a love that makes you do why you. Praise God. Are you with me? So, so how do you practice authentic marriage? The first one is intentional and considerate communication. Come and say intentional. Come and say considerate communication. 
Ephesians 4, verse 29. Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of what? But that which is what? Good. To be used of what? Edifying. That it may minister grace unto who? Leave the scripture. Let no corrupt communication. So when I want to talk, I must make sure my communication is not corrupt. It's not corrupted. And when it's coming out of my mouth, it must be good. It must be what? How do you measure the goodness? It must be able to edify. What's the meaning of edify? Have you heard of edifice? He talk of a big house. Edify means to raise, to lift. Some people, when they talk to their spouse, the spouse will start crying. That's not edifying. It's breaking you down. That it may minister grace to who? To the hearer. So the first way to be authentic is to learn how to talk. Let me tap your neighbor and say, learn how to talk. Now, you see, communication is a skill. It's what? It's a skill. One of the things couples must learn is what I call sandwich communication. What I call it? How many of you know what sandwich is all about? Sandwich is meat, bread. They want to eat something, but they will add something to it. Am I right? So in the sandwich communication, I want to tell you you are wrong, but that's the way I say it. So that you, I will manage your emotion. Praise God. Are you with me? One of my spiritual sons got married two years, after two years in the marriage. One day they, they were to go out for a party. And the wife was dressing, he finished dressing first before the wife. You know that in every relationship, that is how it will be. Women need more time because they are creation of process. They are creation of what? Everything women about women is process. They take time. Amen. When a man wants to go out, within 15 minutes, you are what? Because you are not doing makeup now. You are not fixing your hair. Some of you go and even baba your hair from you from heaven. Am I right? Are you with me? So when he finished, she finished, she came to the husband and said, how do I look? And every time you hear that word, you must be careful what you say. Oh, are you with me? And the young man who just got married two years, just said, ah, this dress makes your stomach so big. <laughs> the lady just removed the dress, said, I'm not going here anymore. And I was, I was waiting for them in the place. I was calling. I was calling. The guy said, we are fighting. I said, ah, what happened? <laughs> I said, give phone to your wife. He said, she will not even take it. I said, tell him it's Pastor Amos. So when I, I said, lady, what happened? He said, this is your boy. He doesn't know how to talk. <laughs> how do I look? Your stomach is big. You don't say that. That's a corrupt What? Every time everybody say, learn how to communicate. You know, women are designed differently from a man. A man is moved by what they see. A woman is moved by what they what? That's why women will spend money on their looks. Because there is a demand and supply. There's a law of demand and what? Looks. They spend money on their face, on their hair, everything. From the hair to down is money. Praise God. Looks. Because men are moved by what they. So a man must learn how to talk. Because a woman is moved by what they what? A man that is not too on a level, high level, can marry a lady who is not on high, who is high level by knowing how to talk. By knowing how to talk. You don't know him. The way he talked to me make me feel good. You don't know him. They said this guy, no good. He said, no, he's a nice guy. Because the guy know how to communicate. 
So the first way is to learn how to communicate. Tell you say learn how to communicate. Very, very important. Don't just talk anyhow. Learn how to communicate. Learn to speak. Learn to listen. Learn to spend quality time in talking. You just look at that person and say nice thing without flattering. After all, when you wanted to marry this girl, you know how you talk. Hey, every time I see you, I can, I can, I, 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 I can, I, I can, I can concentrate. You are the angel that just come into my life. Are you with me? The same you. Now we are in now, and you are talking anyhow. Praise God. You know, good work can make somebody's day. Am I right? Let grace be in your mouth. Today I put grace in your mouth. You will talk the right thing. You will know what to say. Now this affects both gender. Because there are women that don't know how to talk to their husbands too. Are you with me? When you talk, you talk with respect. How do you talk? You know there are only two ingredients marriage needs. Respect and love. Come and say respect. Come and say love. A woman wants love, man wants what? That's what a man wants, respect. A man does not need love. What they need is respect. If you give them respect, they will convert it to what? If you give a woman love, it will put respect out of it. He said, you know, D, I know you love me. <laughs> Praise God. And you need to ask questions. What does love mean to you? Love me differently to different people. Amen. Let's, let's move on. Are you still with me? Is somebody learning something? Number two, choose to love your partner each day. It's a daily walk. Come with a daily. You don't say, I told you I love you 10 years ago. If I don't love you, I will have told you. No. It's a daily thing. You say it and you act it. You say it and you do what? Because talk could be cheap. You say it and you act it continue to say nice things but choose to love your partner every day the love of yesterday has expired with yesterday you continue daily choose to love your partner every day and you see love is not the feelings you can feel love but love is not the feeling love is ability to show care in the midst of impossibility so when you have a wife, we always get angry and shout. The Bible says love is patient. Love is what? Love is patient. One of my spiritual sons, the, husband, the wife is a very strong choleric, which we call alpha female. And the husband is a cool and collected. Come as a cool and collector. It's as cool as cucumber. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the lady will be wrecking and be shouting. D, you are not talking. You are not talking. The guy will just be looking. After much talk, he says, sorry, sorry. He said, pastor, this guy knows how to calm me down. <laughs> are you with me? You know, God will never bring two people that are hot together. No. They won't. You they need. You see, your partner is carrying your strength. And you are carrying a strength. Amen. Are you still with me? So you must choose to love each other every day. There are days you wake up, you don't feel the love. It's not about feeling. You don't live by feeling. It's a decision. It's what? If you sign to walk. Five days a week, resuming your decks by 9 a.m. Someday you wake up and you don't feel like waking up. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. At that day, you wake up and you say, Let me sleep more. But the alarm clock tells you, if you don't wake up by now, you won't make it. What do you do? Decision. So there are times you don't feel law, but you have decided. You even said it in the on the congregation. 
that I will love you till I die. You said it. So but not in talking, but in doing. Choose to love your partner how many days? Mistake can happen. We are not perfect. We will make mistakes as long as we are human beings. But you choose to love. Tell everybody say, I will choose to love. So let me hear you. I want to decide that you love somebody. You make that person a priority. You make that person that what? Every time you fly business class and you have a bag, they will tag your bag priority. What is the meaning of that? It means before they will carry every other bag, your bag should come out first. Am I right? Now, in some hairline, when you are in the first class, you don't pass through the same door other class are passing through. Am I right? When you are in the first class on international flight, most of the time, they have a dedicated people that manage you. And they are only respecting you because of your dollar. Am I right? May you have dollar. Your hymn is weak. <laughs> Come as a priority. So your spouse, your partner is a, is a what? Is what? Is what? Is number one priority if you are in love. Praise God. Some will tell me my job is more important than you because I don't pay bills in this house. Oh, your job is not important than that person. Because when they fire you, you still get back home. Am I right? It's not your priority. Job is not your priority. Of course, you will need to make money, but your partner is more important than your job. Amen. Because the job can fire you. And you get back home. And your partner says, don't worry there. There's a way out. Amen. As long as we are together and we know God, we will make it. Amen. If you are still hearing me, shout hallelujah. Number three, create boundaries in your relationship. How to practice authenticity in marriage. Create boundaries in your relationship. What are the boundaries we are talking about? There are things you cannot say, you cannot do in your relationship to respect your partner. To do what? To show that you love that person. Your family, your extended family is not as important as your partner. Do you know many marriages are scattering today because of extended family? In-laws. Because you have not created boundaries. I've, I've met a, lady, a man who told me, my mother is more important than my wife. And I quickly correct his brain. I said, if you have a choice, will you have chosen your mother? Hmm? Your mother did not choose you. You didn't choose your mother. Destiny chose your mother. Am I right? But this woman you marry, you chose her. You saw many people. And you said, marry me. I mean, is that not what you did? Just, you make a choice. It was a choice you made. Praise God. So she's important. Praise God. Are you with me? If your mother is wicked and she can raise you to this level, if you hand you over to your wife, who is godly, that wife will take you from the ground to the top. Amen. By encouraging you every day, by telling you you can make it. Don't stop that course, you can graduate. Don't stop that professional exam, you will make it. As he's giving you those words, he's going to push you to the next level. Tell him, say, create boundaries. Say, let me hear you. You must let everybody around know that there are things that cannot happen in this house. In fact, your children are not important as your wife, as your husband. Praise God. Because women also, the moment they got a baby, the love they used to give to their husband, they transfer it to who? And the man will no longer matter. Praise God. No, that's not how it works. Because children will leave you. In fact, by the time they reach some age, you see, Mommy, I want to go out. You are owed to them. So you're going to stay with that person for the rest of your life. Don't forget, in the beginning, it was not what? So. So no divorce. Praise God. 
Number four, are you with me? Transparent. That's the last one I'm going to share. In the second service, I will continue. Transparency is a way of authentic relationship. It means you must be true to yourself. Genesis 2.25. Genesis 2.25. Let's read that scripture together. Genesis 2.25. And they were both naked, the man, and what? And they were not what? What's the meaning of that? He's not talking about moon nude. He's talking about being naked. Praise God. Naked with their finance, naked with their phone. <laughs> Praise God. I know a couple that exchange phone every Saturday. They don't go to work on that Saturday, so they exchange their phone. The man will hold the phone of the wife. The husband will hold. So when you call, I say, hello, can I speak to Vivian? If you are Vivian, don't be annoyed. Can I, Victor, can I speak to Victoria? Oh, he said, this is Andy, the husband. I will give her the phone. Praise God. Don't go and practice that, though. <laughs> I don't want pastor to settle quarrel. Are you with me? But they are very authentic to each other. That's why they do that. Praise God. There are, there are people that you can't hold their phone on. I saw something on social media. This guy was bathing and the phone rang. And with his soap, she came out and fell. <laughs> because, hey, the person at the other hand must not hear another voice. Tell him to be authentic. Tell him to be authentic. Authenticity means that you are a person of integrity. You can share anything with your wife without feeling being judged. Praise God. Do you know there are many couples that cannot talk together for 10 minutes without fighting? They are not in this congregation. They are outside. <laughs> because you say, what do we say now? How do we say it now? Because sometimes when you say it, it can, it can cause problems. Praise God. You are not free. You are not yourself. Something is wrong. I, de I declare healing to your relationship today. If you are in a relationship where you are not free, you are in bondage. You are in a second slave trade. Are you with me? And that's how it's supposed to be. Oh my God. Time is not my friend. Are you, have you learned something this morning? We'll continue. We'll continue. Listen to me. Your relationship can work if you have the understanding. You see, one of the things I want to let you know is that skill is very important about everything we do in life. Praise God. The first time I enter aircraft, I thought it's a magic. Praise God. Until a young boy that grew up in our children's church went to flying school in Dallas, came back and started flying. And I said, boy, come. How do you fly? He said, uncle, it's very easy. <laughs> he said, it's very what? He said, you, I can teach you and you will know how to fly. I said, hey, no. <laughs> Rise up on your feet. There's a skill to manage each other. May that skill fall upon you. May you learn it. May you grow into it. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and begin to pray this morning. Lord, give me grace to do all this. Give me grace to do all this. Give me grace. Rebo Shade. Rebo Shade. Rebo Shade. Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. Rebo Shade. Rabba Baba Baba Rebo Shade. Yes, Lord. Rebo Shade. Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Say a better amen.